It's another hello from West Virginia. Or not. Okay, but I am ready with Joke of the Day and I know you're waiting for Joke of the Day. So for all you Star Wars fans out there, why did Star Wars Episodes 4, 5, and 6 come before Episodes 1, 2, and 3? Because in charge of scheduling Yoda was... <laughs> that was bad, wasn't it? Okay. But what is good is graphing horizontal and vertical inequalities in the rectangular coordinate plane. Now, what you're going to find with your horizontal and vertical inequalities is you're going to have the same steps that you had when you were graphing linear inequalities in two variables. What that means is you're going to graph the line, and just like before, if you had an equal to part, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, what happened to your line? Yes, it was a solid line. However, if your line, or if your inequality had no equal to part on it at all, then what happened to your line? Yes, it was a dotted line. So just like before when we had those inequalities in two variables. Now, once you graphed your line, remember you tested a point in one of the half planes. Because once you put the line in there, it created two half planes. You had to decide which half plane had all the solutions. So to figure that out, you tested a point in one of the half planes. And remember, if you could choose that beloved 0, 0, do it. You plug the coordinates for that point back into that inequality. If it created truth, a true statement, what did that mean? Yes, that meant you shade that side because that side is going to have all the solutions. Not only the point that you chose was going to be a solution, but every point on that side was going to be a solution. However, if when you tested that point, you came up with a false statement, what did that mean? Yes, shade the other side. If you came up with a false statement, that meant nothing on that side is going to work. Everything on the other side is going to work. So you can see that when it comes to graphing these horizontal and vertical lines, you've got exactly the same steps. Nothing is changing at all. So when I look at these two examples and I'm told graph the inequality, take a look at this one. I have to graph it as a line. Well, in order to graph it as a line, that means instead of an inequality symbol, I'm going to have an equal sign, and it's going to look like this, x equals negative 4. Now, when I graph x equals negative 4, remember, we've looked at that before, and we said, no, don't read it as x equals negative 4. Read it as x has to be a negative 4. x has to be a negative 4. Where in this 2D coordinate plane is x a negative 4? Is it over here? Is it up here? Is it over here or down here? Yes, it is to the left. Here is where x is a negative 4. Now, notice there's no y value in here, no y variable in there at all. So I don't care what y is. Y can be anything, anything at all. I just need to guarantee that that x is a negative 4 in every point that's on that line. So where else is x a negative 4? Yes, x is a negative 4 here, 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 here. Here, 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 here. And when I connect all of these, aha, I have a vertical line. Now, that vertical line still created two half planes. It created a half plane over here and a half plane over here. So I have to decide which half plane has all the solutions. So I'm going to test a point. Can I choose that beloved zero, zero? Remember, I can't choose it if it's on the line. Is it on the line? No, it's not. So I can choose my beloved zero, zero. So when I test 0, 0, what I'm going to do is put it in that inequality. Well, notice there's only an x. So I'm going to take the x coordinate of 0 and put it in there. And I'm going to look at that statement that says 0 greater than negative 4. Is 0, in fact, bigger than a negative 4? Yeah, it is. So that's a true statement. And when it's true, remember, that means the side that had this 0, 0 has all the solutions. So here's the 0, 0. This side has all the solutions, so I'm going to shade everything on this side. And that is the picture representation of that linear inequality. Everything over here works. Everything on the line works. Nothing over here works. So if I pick any of these points and put their coordinates in there, it will create a true statement. Pick this point right here, 2, 2. Well, with 2, 2, the only thing that I can plug in is the x-coordinate. When I take that x-coordinate of 2 and put it right there, is 2 greater than negative 4? Yes, it is. So see, everything over here works. Everything on the line works. Everything over there does not work. Now, let's check this one. Once again, graph the line. So the line is going to be y equals 5. 
And remember, read it as y has to be 5. So where is y5? Is y5 here, 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 or here? Yes, y is 5 up here. And remember, there's no x in there, so I don't care what x is. x can be anything. I don't really care. Just make sure that the y is a 5. So y is also 5 here, 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 here. And when I connect those, I get a horizontal line. So now I've broken it into two half planes, half plane down here, half plane up here. I'm going to check and see which half plane has all the solutions. So can I test that beloved 0, 0? It is not on the line. 0, 0 is sitting right here. So I'm going to test it, which means that I don't have an x, so all I can do is take this y coordinate of 0, plug it in there. 0 less than or equal to 5, is that true or is that false? 0 smaller than, yeah, it's true. So where 0, 0 sits, that's a solution. Everything on that side is a solution. So I'm going to shade all of this. And once again, everything down here will work. Everything on the line will work. And nothing up here will work. So therefore, um, what I've got here, and I can test one of these points. Let's test 1, 1. 1, 1, if I put the y corner to 1 in here, 1 smaller than 5, yeah, that works. Test something up here. Test, for instance, a 2, 2, 4. 2, 6. And that means put the 6 right here, 6 smaller than 5. Does that work? No. So nothing up here works. Everything down here works. On the line, let's test, for instance, a 3, 5. The only thing that I can put in there is the 5. 5 smaller than or equal to 5. That means it doesn't have to be smaller than. It can be the same. 5 equals 5? Yeah, it does. So that means this is a solution. And I need to go back up here because I made a huge mistake over here, and I'm terribly sorry about that. Notice there's no equal to part. No equal to part. What's my mistake? That should have been a dotted line. So I need to make this a dotted line. And remember, the important thing about this being a dotted line is that means nothing on here works. So see, if I would test a point that's on this line, say, for instance, let's test a negative 4 or 3. Negative 4, 3. Well, remember, the x coordinate is the only thing I can put in here. So I'm going to put a negative 4 in there. This says negative 4 bigger than negative 4. It does not say bigger or equal to. It just says bigger. See, over here, I had less than or equal to. It was okay for them to be equal to each other. But here, it's not okay for them to be equal to each other. So 4 greater than negative 4? No, it's false. So this needs to be a dotted line, and I'm very sorry that I made that mistake before. So I hope this helps with graphing horizontal and vertical lines. You can see that it's the same steps as before. Just be very careful when it's a solid or a dotted line, and then test a point that's in the half plane. If it's a true statement when you plug it in, shade that side. If it's a false statement when you plug it in, shade the other side. It's as simple as that. I hope it helps. Have a great day.